Pedro side. I know that this was something that you guys have been working towards all mm -hmm. season when you finally saw Nebraska pop up on the, the seed line there. What, what was your immediate reaction? Um, you know, it's a little bit of relief um, just knowing, you know, how much has gone into this, um, you know, starting back in June. Uh, when we got most of the team together. But even then, you know, obviously just the amount of guys that we added and then also didn't have, you know, with Rink and Casey and just kind of all the struggles we went through over the course of this season. Um, and just, you know, obviously like the, the heartbreak losses we had that were games that we really um, just kind of pissed away. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of a short-lived moment where it's like, you know, it feels good to, you know, see it officially there, even though we've known for – better part like you know two weeks now that we were most likely in um but you know now it's just like okay how do we get ready um but definitely you know a bit gratifying just seeing it there for either of you you know, talk about having the same approach every game you know what's the challenge of staying level you know staying you know keeping that same approach not getting caught up in the moment on that stage like the tournament it's uh definitely a high stakes game that we're going into um this this past weekend was some high stakes game and uh Feel like we've played a lot of must-win games throughout this uh, throughout this season, especially this last month. Um, so just sticking with what we know, sticking with the same uh, preparation, same same type of recipe for how we prepare, and um, I think that will help us kind of keep us level-headed and take away some of the nerves. But obviously, I mean, if you're not nervous, less excited for this game, then I mean, this is a, a great stage, great opportunity. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously at this time of year, there's there's no slouches left. Um, you know, even like those low, like 16, 15, 14 seeds that you know really had to get out the mud out of their conference tournaments, you know, they show that they can win consistently, um, you know, in the biggest moments and pull it out. Um, and just, you know, even with, you know, like yesterday or, uh, yeah, yesterday, you know, NC State beat North Carolina for their fifth game in five days, you know, and I think they made it in as like an 11 seed or something, 11 seed or 12 seed. And it's like, that's supposed to be the bad team that just beat, you know, a genuinely like pretty fresh North Carolina team on its fifth day. And so like, there's really no days or any kind of, you know, you, you can't underestimate anybody. Um, and you know, it, it is do or die. And so, um, you know, everyone's going to be excited and everyone's going to be, you know, ready to go for these, um, for these next few days leading up to uh, A&M. Fred said he was in his room watching it and got a little emotional. Can you tell how much this meant to him? He's built this up for five years to try to get to this point. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, obviously with me, um, you know, it's like my first year back, but um, just, you know, being from the city, uh, you know, every time I come back and, you know, just following the team, um, you know, you just, you just see a lot of stuff online, you know, talking about the program and, you know, Coach Hoiberg. And I know just, you know, how challenging it's been for him to try to figure it out and, um, just deal with um, not always the, the nicest thing said about, you know, him or the team. Um, and so for him to finally get, you know, the right pieces to kind of play and do the things that, um, you know, he's wanted and, you know, do it the right way. I, I just know how much that means to him to um, finally have some bit of kind of uh, relief with mm -hmm. um, the amount of time and investment he's put into this. Yeah, you could definitely see it, like, touch them. He's, he's been here, he's invested a lot of time and effort into this program and to finally see it pay off, I, I'm sure that's uh, an amazing feeling for him. He's a very even, even keel like uh, person. Uh, you don't see that many emotions up or down with him, which is something that has definitely helped us throughout this season, but you can definitely see today that it meant a lot to him. So that's pretty cool. The fan base is pretty fired up about your guys' matchup, just considering your former athletic <laughs> director is now at that school. Does that mean anything to you guys? Uh, well, we're not we're not playing the athletic director. We're playing the men's basketball team. Um, that's what we'll be focused on. And uh, I know for the fans, it will this will mean a little bit extra. But yeah, like I said, we're not playing the athletic director. We're playing playing the team. We're playing those guys, and that's what we'll be focused on. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, no, I mean, yeah, Trev Tre was. Um, I mean, obviously, we don't deal with anything behind the scenes, you know, outside of the court. Um, but, you know, he was he was always good to us, you know, any interaction we had. And, um, you know, I was a part of, like, the um, the SAC, like, group or whatever, the uh, advisory committee. And, um, you know, he was always, like, a, a genuine, like, good dude. And so, you know, there's no ill will with us um, players and, you know, 
I know that the, the fan base obviously has very different um, feelings to that, but you know we're just trying to uh, approach this as you know, just another matchup, and you know we got to take care of business. Won't let it be a distraction. Yeah. Be a distraction. Just let's not focus. Let on that ball. influence us. Just yeah, exactly. Focus on ball. What What do you guys uh, know about Texas A and M? I personally don't know a whole lot. I've seen some games in the past from them, but this year I've not really followed them that, that much. Obviously, uh, once you know you're playing, you, you're hearing some stuff about how well they rebound, but also how they're not very good at defending a three, which is one of their one of our strengths. So I feel like it's a game of who can play better towards their strengths and who can adjust and mitigate the other team's strengths. And we'll definitely do a whole lot of rebounding drills this upcoming week. Um, I know that's been some of our struggle this season, so uh, we know that and we know how to how to work on it and we'll hopefully be ready for it. Yeah, yeah. Joe said, the Texas A&M leads the nation in offensive rebounding percentage. You guys just faced Illinois, who was the number one offensive rebounding team in the Big Ten. How much do you think that will prepare you just for the, the level of physicality you'll need to bring to, to match up with them? Um, you know, it is, I mean, obviously it's very unfortunate the way that that unfolded, but it's nice that the last game we played was, you know, a, a slap in the face, um, just in terms of, you know, how we got beat. Like, that's going to be fresh in everybody's minds that, that we lost, we're not, we didn't play for a championship today um, because we couldn't keep them off the glass. And so it's kind of nice that, um, you know, the, the poor outcome has, you know, that kind of flip side to it. Um, and yeah, it's just going to be about, you know, how badly everybody wants it. Um, because there's not a lot of scouting you can do when you know it's just going to be, yep. they're coming. Like, they're ball, crashing. Ball goes up, they're coming. Yeah, like the game's going to be one on the glass. Like, they don't shoot it well from three, but they're going to go get their misses. Um, and so, you know, the coaches can, I don't know, maybe scout their most likely path to the rim. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, it's going to be, you know, man on man, you know, are you going to nut up and get it done? Uh, last night, Juwan was pretty hurt that he couldn't be out there due to fouling out. Just gonna, how is his leadership going to be, and also NCAA tournament experience going to play a role next week? Um, you know, Juan always does a great job for us, um, just setting that tone on the glass, um, and just you know, on that defensive end overall. Um, and you know, obviously, you know, you got to see it, you know, just emotionally, just how much he cares and you know wants to be there for us. Um, and so, you know, just. Kind of knowing that, having that poise and you know that experience playing, um, you know, obviously in a completely different venue than we've been anywhere close to today or this year, um, you know, against a team we've never played against, um, you know, it's definitely something that we'll be able to rely on. And you know, he always does a good job just sharing um, his thoughts, whether it's in the timeout or, or uh, halftime. And so, um, you know, I know guys will be looking to him for some leadership in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Great coach said that you're an easy team to cheer for. What do you yeah. think you mean? Uh, I think we have a lot of guys with good character that play the right way and want to share the ball. Um, we've definitely shown that we got guys that are unselfish and I feel like, I mean, I personally, I love teams that share the ball and make the extra pass and want to play for each other and win together. And this is for sure a team that does that really, really well. And uh, with KSA, I mean, KSA is electric. So a lot of people will be cheering for him. and. Um, this team in general, um, I mean, it's a lot of fun to watch. Players? Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.